Okay? When you go in there and you act like that, you just make it worse. And I'm telling you, the owner has to be cringing. You can't stonewall everybody that way. To go in there and waste 20 minutes of that time telling you how good everybody is when the team is a mortal embarrassment is a waste of time. He should have gone in there today, showed some anger, and said this is unacceptable, and we're going to make changes. We're going to bring in players that can play. We're going to get this turned around. We're going to find people who can play this game to try and tell you, as he did, we're very close to winning. At 1-7, and seven, we all know that's not true. Number two, to tell you that you have good players and good coaches, if you have good players and good coaches, why are you 1-7? and seven? Then he told you every position's the same. If the man doesn't value the quarterback position, he should not be in a position of authority in the National Football League. In the National Football League, positions are not equal. You have to find a quarterback. He basically told you, we don't need that. We need to have every player, every position. That's how we win. Then he told you, I've won in the past. No, he hasn't. He was in Tampa when they won a championship. He had nothing to do with it. He was in Seattle. He was not ever in a position of authority. The guys never picked a player before he got here. And you know what? You can almost say the same thing now after two years. Yes, he picked a couple of defensive linemen. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, big deal. They got to get a couple of them, right? Look at this year's draft. The team is bad. The quarterback position, they didn't even tell you who the quarterback is. How could you this week go to Kansas City, which is a pit to play in, and play Geno Smith? And then tell me you're trying to win. How could you not be auditioning cornerbacks night and day and tell me you're trying to win? You can't, you got to hold people accountable. See, this is an organization with an invisible owner. He don't want to, he's never going to get out in front of this. That's fine. He doesn't have, you don't want him to be off the blank who's on the field yesterday basically saying we can't blow a 21-point lead. That will not happen again in this franchise. No one else had to say it there. The owner said it there. But everyone felt it. He knew his fan base felt it. Idzik is so clueless. He doesn't get it. First of all, he gives you this Jet Nation garbage. There is no such thing. Play like a jet. What does that mean? Commit a penalty or fumble the ball or drop the ball? Which one is that? Play like a jet. We know it's not play well. Because we've all been here all our lives. So the idea that you want to build on a franchise that has been, for the most part, a laughing stock is ridiculous. Where the heck do you think same old jets came from? So this play like a jet stuff is nonsense. I hate hearing it. Jet Nation. There is no Jet Nation. There's no anything. There's Red Sox Nation. There are no other nations. Everyone else is just ripping it off. And they don't exist. What is Jet Nation? 42,000 empty, 42, empty seats? Jet Nation. The Giants have got great fans. They don't have a nation. This guy got up there. And you know what? If I watched that and I were the owner, I'd throw the television out the window. After yesterday's game, and this guy sat there and said to you, you should have been, I wish the fans could have watched the sideline at San Diego. They did watch it. They watched your team go out there in the second half and get mauled and get shut out. They watched Michael Vick drop back and get pounded into the turf. They watched the running back who had like 30 yards on the season run for 160 against you. They saw your team put up zero effort. They watched them yesterday play like absolute just garbage. Penalties, mistakes, we're this close. All we have to do, these guys are laughing at you, throwing 50-yard passes over your head and intercepting passes and giggling as they come to the sidelines. It's so easy.
The Bills were bad in the first half in executing yesterday. If they didn't have fired the halftime, they would have had 48 points. They played like garbage. Their coach at halftime, when he's going off the field, said, we weren't very good. He was, they knew it. His team was bad, and they led by seven. And you know what? They went out and played in the second half. Just went in smiling and laughing because they made a 55-yard field goal. Here's the problem with the Jets and Rex Ryan. They are so easily satisfied. Any little victory, even inside the game, makes them smile and high-five. They're still losing and they're doing that. I mean, this franchise, if I took the Rex Ryan press conference yesterday where he told you Geno Smith's still going to be a really good player, and I took this guy who just told you the owner's great, the president's great, the coaches are great, the players are great, you fans are great, everything's great, but we're 1-7. and seven. And we've been outscored you know, 230 to 140. And we have one interception on the season. And yesterday, Orton threw for, completed 10 passes for 9,000 yards. Sammy Watkins, it was so easy, he forgot he was playing. He thought he was in a scrimmage. He started backpedaling. He said, I'm going to get in trouble. I forgot. This was such a joke. He said, the first time I ran a play, I was 25 yards behind a guy. He only caught three passes yesterday for 157 yards. You know how long it takes a jet receiver to get 157 yards? Three years. And everything's fine. We just need to evaluate. We need to finish. We need to finish. You need to be finished. Your calls when we come back.